Hello. Hello. I'm going to turn it down. You're loud in my ear. There you go. <laughs> and I might need to put my earbuds on to make sure my audio is good. I can hear you pretty clearly. Okay. But we'll see what the students and parents say when they join us. See if they can hear this as clearly. Can y'all, can y'all hear us okay? We hope so. Can you hear me now? I cried myself up. All right. Carrington says yes. Cool. All right. Lisa says I can see and hear. Ben says sound good to me. Okay. Awesome. Well, then, I guess we will get started. So, hello and welcome to East Carolina Music. University and our Q&R session as a part of ECU New Student Orientation. My name is Haley. I'm from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, and I'm a senior majoring in recreational therapy with a minor in psychology, and this is my second summer as an orientation assistant, and we appreciate you all for joining us today. Today, we are going to cover any questions that you may have for us. This session will be recorded and will be archived and available on the ECU official YouTube channel after our session has ended. In order to make sure that we are following accessibility guidelines, the archived recorded session will be closed captioned. If further accommodations are required, please contact the Office of Disability Services. I would like to start by introducing my fellow staff members who are joining me today. On camera with me is Ashley, and in the chat are OAs Ben, Harrington, Liz, and Zaria, who will help us answer your questions. So if Ashley, you want to introduce yourself, and then we will get started. Hi, my name is Ashley Cook. I am a senior elementary ed major. I am from Cary, North Carolina, which is where I am right now. And this is my third year being an orientation assistant. All right. So if anybody has any questions, just feel free to drop them in the chat box and we will answer them for you. All right, well, I don't see any questions yet, so we'll start off with some questions of our own. Um, Haley, what is, what is something that drew you to going to ECU? So what drew me to going to ECU was my tour experience. I toured during um, spring break of my junior year, and it was one of those cheesy moments where it felt like as soon as I stepped foot on campus, I felt like it was home. I know that sounds really corny. Um, but the student body was really welcoming, and I just really liked the vibe that I got from campus. Um, so that was one of, like, my first impressions of ECU and one of the big reasons why I chose to go. What about you, Ashley? I have always wanted to go to ECU. I used to live in Greenville kindergarten through fifth grade, and when we moved, I always told my parents I was coming back, and I made it full circle. I have also wanted to be a teacher since I was little. And in my eyes, ECU is the end-all be-all for being a teacher's college. So I said, all right, we're going to follow my dreams and go with it. And came back to Greenville, and I'm on the path to teach. And here you are. <laughs> here I am. <sighs> all right. Let's see. Does anybody have any questions for us that we can try to answer for you? I think of another question that I could ask. Okay. Ashley, where did you live your freshman year? I lived in Gateway West in the Camp Pires Living Learning Community uh, with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was fun. Um, Haley, where did you live your freshman year? Let's see. I lived in the Camp Pirates Living, <laughs> Living Learning Community in Gateway West. So, you know. We were there together, and that's where we met, so. That is where we met, and now we're stuck together. <laughs> All right, so Carrington Keys asked us the question of what laptop do you recommend? Let's see, Carrington, we actually do have a link um, that has all of these suggested um, laptops and technology for students, depending on their major. Um, I personally have a MacBook because my major didn't really require a um, specific make of laptop. Um, but if any of the other OAs want to, you know, drop the link in the comments, it's a great resource to see if there's a specific um, recommended um, laptop 
that you need for your major. Let's see. And then Anna asked, are the rumors true that if a class is over 50 students, it will go online? That is yet to be determined. It is a rapidly evolving situation, and ECU has, I believe it is eight task force that are working towards making sure that when we return to campus, it's as safe and the students can remain as healthy as possible. So the answer is we don't know yet. But as soon as ECU has made that decision, we know that they will send it out an email to the students' ECU emails. To the, so there's a plug to make sure to be checking your ECU email as much as you can. Uh, Ms. Robin asked, what did you like about being in an LLC? Hey, I really liked the fact that it gave me the opportunity to meet um, other people on campus. Um, we all were living together in an LLC, and since we signed up for this LLC, it kind of um, put us together as we had like like interests and what we wanted out of our um, freshman year experience. So I liked that it really gave us the opportunity to meet other people and to get involved. Um, with that class, we did take um, Coag 1000, which is, which is a freshman seminar class. And I highly recommend it to first year students because it really helps you um, find, about, find out about the different resources on campus, as well as other ways to get involved. I agree. I think the LLC made a larger university a little bit smaller. I think it also allowed us to take some of the classes like COAD and Kinesiology 1000 that like Kinesiology 1000 is needed to graduate. So I think it was very nice to have a class kind of checked off my list. Caitlin asked, my English class has changed and said TVA. Does this mean that it will be online now? No. So TVA just needs to be announced. That means that ECU is figuring it out. There's um, a chance that it will be online, um, but it's not 100% certain. Yes. Let's see, we had another question from Shannon. My daughter is a freshman, and with registration being difficult, so you know if the co ed class is automatically registered for freshmen, and if not, how do they register for it? So the answer is no. Freshmen are not automatically registered for a co ed class, but they can go and add it to their class list, um, to their courses that they will be taking in the fall. It is under counselor education, and it is COAD 1000. It is a one-hour class. Um, so it, it's a nice class for freshmen to take because it will help you make the campus a little bit smaller. It will help you identify your resources. It will help you meet some people. It will kind of make the university a little bit smaller for you. Mm-hmm. And like Ashley said, it is only a one credit hour course. Um, so if your student already has like that 15, 16 um, credit hour range, they're more than welcome to also add that. Um, personally, it didn't really um, affect my course load that much. I really think it was just a really um, helpful class. I agree. All right, Haley, if you had to pick one thing that you think is very, very important for the incoming students to bring, what is your one thing that you put top of the list very important? Mm, I would say, I would say bed risers and ECU's um, beds already have bed risers built into it, but I liked having that extra height in order to be able to store more stuff under um, my twin bed. Um, it really made it easy to be able to go under there, too. You didn't exactly have to crawl on the floor to get to my stuff underneath. Um, so I would definitely suggest bed risers. That's just personally, though. What about you, Ashley? I would probably say my mattress pad. I, a, we like, I like, um, my bed wasn't exactly squishy, so we were trying to make it squishier, and it kind of helped me sleep better. So those twin extra-long mattresses are good, but if you're a little more particular like I am, you may want a, a mattress topper. 
I was told that my phone is buzzing, so let me put myself on. Do not <laughs> Ooh, Zarya asked a great question. Where is your favorite place to eat on campus? Ooh. I know Haley's answer. <laughs> with me, um, without a doubt, it's Chick-fil-A. Um, we do have a full-service Chick-fil-A um, right by all of our academic buildings. So for one, it's in a really convenient location. And for two, I prefer Chick-fil-A. <laughs> what about you, Ashley? I would have to say I'm a big fan of anything in the main student center. I think that is a great resource we have now with a lot of restaurants being Cane's, Aubon Pan, 1904, which is the burger place. We have what I call the candy store, but it's a sweet shop. It has ice cream and candy. Um, I'm missing one. Oh, and Panda Express. Um, I'm a big fan of Aubon Pan. It's kind of Panera-like, mm -hmm. so I can go in there and get my soup and salad on, on a nice day when I'm feeling healthier than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and thank you to our fellow OAs for dropping the links in our chat. Oh, yes. Makes our life a whole lot easier. <laughs> Haley, if you could provide one tip to an incoming freshman about living with a roommate, what would it be? Um, this is kind of a joke, but it's also kind of not. I always say um, on the tours that I give, if you and your roommate can agree on a temperature for your room, that you'll become best friends. Um, so if one of you really likes cold, to sleep in the cold, and the other one of you really likes a room hot, um, I would definitely suggest talking about that your first week after you're there. I would definitely talk about that also when you sit down with your RA and discuss your roommate contract. I agree. I think that's very important. I also think it's very important to um, make sure that you know when your roommate's classes are, because mm -hmm. for me, I took a lot of 8 a.m.s and my roommate did not. So I knew that I had to be quiet when I woke up in the morning and kind of, you know, go quietly around our room, turn on the little lights as much as I can and try to keep to myself. Um, and then her classes were later in the afternoon. So when I was fully done, she wouldn't be there. So that was kind of cool. Let's see. Carrington asks, what is our favorite tradition? Uh, yeah, you can go first. I would say my favorite tradition is probably Paint It Purple Friday. I think it's just really cool to see everybody wearing purple and all the um, bus. Ashley, I don't know if it's just my end, but I, I think you're frozen. All right. Well, I think we lost Ashley for a second. I will try to add her back in. There we go. Sorry. Okay. My sister tried to call me. <laughs> I'm like, no, sister, not today. <laughs> um, but I enjoy Paint It Purple Friday. I really like the signs on the buses that say Paint It Purple Friday. And I like that there's just so much purple around campus. And one of my favorite things is when the Cliff Cab comes out, which is our baseball coach. And um, he drives around on this little golf cart and he helps to, like, ask you questions. And there's some other important faculty that come out. And they'll, like, hand you coat, um, koozies or Gatorade or a T-shirt. And I just think it's a... It's a very hype day, in my opinion. Haley, what's your favorite tradition? One of my favorite traditions kind of goes with yours. I really love pirate football. I love how excited the um, student body gets and, like, the parents and the alumni. I love how excited everybody gets um, when game day comes around. Um, it's just a different feel around Greenville. Everybody's just really excited. Um, and I also just love football. And I love how... Um, everybody comes together and cheers on on the Pirates in the Boneyard. This Pirate football is definitely one of my favorite traditions. All right. All right. Heather, Heather Cook asked, are freshmen required to live on campus? Yes. Yes. Um, but there are, there are some special contingencies. 
And that's when you would need to contact Campus Living and talk to them directly. Um, I believe the rule is if you live within 35 miles of the university, you could um, apply to um, avoid the requirement. But that all comes down to Campus Living and contacting them. So if one of our fellow OAs can put in the Campus Living, um, campusliving.ecu.edu and their phone number, that would be great. All right, EC Transitions asked, where is your favorite place to study on campus? Um, for me, when it's really nice and pretty outside, I like to study on the mall. Um, and that's the big green grassy area right in the middle of central campus. Um, it's a really peaceful area out there. Wi-Fi does reach out there. Um, so I really like being outside when I study on campus. What about you, Ash? I am a big fan of Joiner Library and their individual study rooms. You can go onto the Joiner Library website and book one and reserve it for two hours. And I'll just go in there and reserve it for two hours. There are minimal distractions. I'll put my phone on Do Not Disturb and I'll just work for a straight two hours. And that's my good way of making sure I get all of my work done and the least amount of distractions. Let's see. All right. All right. Jenny asked, so, what is the one thing you wish you knew before you came to campus? Um, this is kind of my fault, but I wish I had known more about um, the Pirate Academic Success Center and that it was free and that there were um, a lot of different classes that were being offered as far as tutoring sessions. Um, like I said, that's kind of my fault for just not really paying attention. Um, so I would definitely suggest checking out the Pirate Academic Success Center. I do know that this coming fall, they will be doing a lot of online tutoring sessions as well. Um, and they do that for all um, like beginner level classes, like the 1,000 to 2,000 level courses. Um, so I would definitely suggest um, checking that out. That's one thing I knew. I wish I knew. Yes. And then we have a question from Madeline. What do you recommend for helping with the scheduling of classes? It seems to be a big struggle for me, especially since there are two terms now. So I definitely would stress the, important of, the importance of the schedule planner that ECU provides through PiratePort to kind of help us schedule it all out. And you can even put in breaks where you're, if you don't want an 8 a.m., you can put in a little break and say no 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Or if you know that you have to work that evening, you can, you know, if you work every Tuesday, you can put in a block that says no classes after four on Tuesday. I think a lot of, I think using that is especially helpful. I think also contacting your advisor would be extremely helpful because they are the end all be all on this. They know all of the answers and can see all of these classes and can help you even move them around. And they also may suggest that instead of taking, you know, math in the fall semester, maybe you move it to the spring semester and you move your English to the fall. Um, they're great about that kind of stuff. Um, I just say ditto on what Ashley said. <laughs> I really think that the um, schedule planner is just a really good resource to use. Um, I'm a person that does not like 8 a.m. So I specifically add a break like from eight to nine that says I'm still sleeping. Um, but that's just me. I'm more of a stay up late and study than wake up early. Um, so it's definitely based on personal preference and I highly suggest using the schedule planner um, to find out what works best for you. Absolutely. All right. So then we have a question from Heather. Are there special events on parents weekend? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, there are a lot of different I've... events. Um, parents weekend. Oh, I heard something about my volume. There we go. I need to move my mic. And I need to move closer to my phone, I guess. <laughs> um, the answer is yes. There are a lot of events on Parents Weekend that ECU puts out for um, every family member to be involved. One of my favorites is the tailgate that they put on at the top of College Hill where there's food and there's live music and I believe there are some giveaways and it's just really cool that the ECU Family Services does that to make sure that they are um, included also. 
Beth asked, how important is it to take co-ed? My son has not been able to find one that fits into his schedule. I would say it's based on if you want to take it or not. Like Ashley said, it's not a required course, but I do believe that it is highly beneficial. Um, I would say if you really want to take co-ed, you can email transitions at ecu.edu, and it looks like they just dropped that email in the chat box. Um, the, actually, the Office of Student Transitions are the ones who um, run the COAD 1000 classes. So if your student really wants to get into a COAD 1000 course, that I believe that the um, office would definitely help you as far as getting them into that class. And then Madeline asked, is it true freshmen are only going to get to park in D lot this year? Haley? Oh, I thought you were answering. No, um, I, mean, I can answer. Oh, it's okay. Parking is still working on the logistics of everything. Um, I do believe that, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, but I do believe D-Lot is going to be the main um, parking lot for incoming students this fall. Um, that's just to make sure that all upperclassmen are able to get parking spaces as well. And then after um, the D-Lot passes go on sale and after upperclassmen um, purchase their parking passes, that's when... Um, all the other lots would be open for um, incoming students. Yes. And it's the word, the rumor going around is that parking passes will be available towards the middle of July. Um, but that's just something that as OAs, we're going to keep an eye out for um, because parking did not give us a definite date, but we will keep our eyes out for it. And we will post it on our social medias, on our OA Instagrams to make sure that all the students are informed. Um, it's also important to check with parking and see what they know, see if there's more information than we can provide. Let's see. Heather asked, are we going to have ECU football this fall? As of right now, um, football is still a go. We've been talking with athletics and they're assuring us that as of right now, um, football is still coming come August 29th. Um, we will keep you updated if there are any changes, but as of right now, the plan is to have football in the fall. All right, and then we had another question down here. Um, Carrington asked, what is a typical day at ECU like? Um, well, you go to class. <laughs> well, um, for me, I typically have an either an 8 a.m. or a 9 a.m. I like to get up early, go to class, get it done, so then I can go to work. So I will typically have two to three classes in the morning between probably 8 and noon. And then I will have a lunch break, which I built in using my ECU scheduler so I can make sure I have lunch. And then I probably have one more class, and then I go to work. And during the school year, I work for ECU Campus Living. And I'm also a PAL through Campus Living, um, which is a peer academic liaison or peer academic leader. So we help students who are struggling. Um, so that's what my day looks like. And then I may go to an organizational meeting in the afternoon, go home and do my homework. Yeah, my schedule is kind of the same. Um, wake up, go to class, eat lunch, study, all that fun stuff. And then I also work at um, the ECU Campus Wellness Center, which is located inside the um, Rec and Wellness Center or the big gym on campus. Um, and then I also have a job with um, the East Carolinian, which is ECU school newspaper. So I am a photographer for them. So typically I will go to a different, a couple of different events throughout the week and take pictures of those. Sometimes it's athletics, sometimes it's speakers, things like that. Um, so those are just um, things that pop up on different days throughout the week. And Liz asked us, what if I run out of meals? Well, Liz, that is what your books on your meal plan are used for. Um, but you also, with your on-campus dining plan, you also have unlimited access to the dining halls. So you will not starve. I pinky promise you will have unlimited access to the dining halls. Um, during their operational hours so that you can go in and out, in and out, in and out um, and grab that banana for breakfast. And then you see Haley walk in and you're like, oh, I want to eat with Haley and you can walk back in. It's not like you have a certain amount of swipes at the dining hall. So you will not starve. 
And our different eateries across campus, um, such as Raising Cane's, Panda Express, Chick-fil-A, Au Bon Pain, things like that, Starbucks, um, all of those do take um, cash and, like, your debit card. So if you do run out of meals and bucks, um, that's okay. You can use those. But if you do want to add more bucks to your meal plan, you are more than welcome to do that as well. And that's through um, Campus Dining. Yes. And when it comes down to meal plans, um, some we've had the question before, uh, which one do you suggest? I suggest the middle of the road one. It's the purple 40, meaning that you have 40 meals, 350 pirate bucks, and then you have unlimited access to the dining hall. And a meal is when you would go to Chick-fil-A or another establishment on campus and they have all their pirate meals listed. It would include... Um, like, for example, the nuggets, fries, and a drink, or a sandwich, fries, and a drink. Um, so it's typically like a combo meal you would get if you were at, like, the actual restaurant kind of thing. All right. Miss Kim. Hi, Miss Kim. Asked, um, Aaron loves smoothies. Is there a place that has smoothies on campus? Now, it's been a few years since I've um, lived on campus, but I do remember that when I was there that the dining hall, um, Todd Dining Hall specifically offered um, smoothies. You go up there and pick your fruit and your yogurt and things like that, and um, they will make a smoothie for you. Um, Ashley, do you know of any other eateries on campus that offer smoothies? Yes. So Abba and Pan in the main student center will also make smoothies. I believe they have four or five options that are posted, um, but I do know that I have had one of their smoothies. They are very good, um, but I do know that they serve smoothies also. So, Aaron, go to Aubon Pan, get you a smoothie. <laughs> so, Gina asked, when will parking permits be available for purchase and what is the annual cost? So, the answer is, it, we have been told that it's going to be the middle of July but that is all up to parking and when parking would like to tell us and <laughs> let us know. Um, and the annual cost depends on where your student is going to park. Um, each of those changes based on the location. If they are, um, if they're able to get a parking spot that is next to their residence hall, it will most likely cost more than parking out in D lot, which is over near the Belk building and the baseball stadium. And all of those prices are listed on the parking website at parking.ecu.edu. I do have the prices pulled up right now. So we did say that um, incoming students will more than likely be parking in our D lot. And a D lot pass is um, $308. And that is for the entire year. It's not just for fall semester and then you have to pay again spring semester. It is for the entire 2020-2021 um, school year. Oh, Zarya brought up that um, Einstein Brothers also makes smoothies. I completely forgot about Einstein Brothers. I'm so focused on the main student center right now. Um, but they are in uh, Wright Plaza, right in the middle of the academic building. So that would be a very convenient spot to get a smoothie to. And I have had their smoothies. They are quite good. <laughs> we just have so many them. options on campus that it's hard to remember them all. If they have to park in D lot, can they take the buses over to it? Absolutely. Um, so our main bus, the one that kind of just goes around the perimeter of campus is 301 Gold. Um, that bus during the day actually comes to our stops every 10 minutes. And like I said, it takes a loop all around campus. So you can even start from West End and go all the way to our D lot. Um, it is closer to College Hill, but College Hill, you can also hop on a bus there. And they will take you over to D lot and they will also pick you up from D lot. I do know that at, at night, um, the bus does not come as often. It's about every 30 minutes. Um, so if there's a chance that you miss the bus and that you don't want to sit outside at the bus stop for 30 minutes, you can also call um, ECU's service safe ride. Oh, my laptop went off. And they will actually come pick you up and take you back to your residence hall on campus as well. Yes. And um, the ECU Transit Service uses the app NextBus, 
and you can just go in and you can select the ECU transit system and they'll help to give you alerts of when which bus is going to be at the stop nearest you. And you can also look of like if you do have to park in D lot, you're like, okay, the bus will be here in five minutes. I'm going to wait in my car or the bus is going to be here in 15 minutes. I'm going to call safe ride. So to help you make those decisions. Madeline asked, is there an app that tells us how many pirate books and stuff we have left? Mm -hmm. Haley, would you like to answer that one? Absolutely. Um, Madeline, we do have an app. It is called the GET app, G-E-T. Um, it's a gray app if you search it in your app store. And you're more than welcome to log in using your um, ECU ID, which is the last name, first initial, year you graduated high school. Um, and they um, have a service up there that tells you how many meals you have left and how many bucks you have left. And I do believe um, somebody else also just dropped the name of the app in the comments. Um, so I highly recommend um, downloading the Get app. If you like to go to Starbucks every day, your bucks will run out. Um, so I definitely suggest getting the Get app and um, keeping track of how many bucks and meals you have left. Yes. Um, the Get app also allows you to see how many guest meal swipes you have left into the dining hall. Um, it just gives you, I believe, EC Dining gives you five. And then if your mom comes and she wants to eat at the dining hall, you swipe her in. If your sister comes and she wants to eat at the dining hall, you swipe her in. And now you're down to three guest meals, which I think is very convenient. Heather said, is the library open 24-7? What can my student do to work off their freshman 15? So those are two great questions. Um, I can answer the first one. The library is open 24 hours, five days a week. It closes early on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and after a certain time, I believe it is 10 p.m., you have to use your um, one card to get into the library. Um, but you are more than welcome to go in there and study all night if you so choose to. And the other half of our question is, what can my student do to work off their freshman 15? Um, there is the student rec center, and your student can go and take um, classes where there is an instructor. They can work out on the equipment. They can play basketball. They can play racquetball. They can go in the yoga room. They can go in the CrossFit. I call it the CrossFit corner. Um, they can climb the rock wall. There are all sorts of activities that your student can go to make sure that they are staying fit and away from that freshman 15. Nadia asked another question. Do you have a hospitality program? We do yes. we have um, hospitality management. So that is the yes. hospitality major at ECU. Yes. Um, ben Zaria asked, what happens if I don't use all of my bucks in meals? So your bucks will roll over to the next semester, but your meals will not. Um, so if I had four meals left in the end, um, at the end of November when we have our Thanksgiving and Christmas winter break, um, then I, I'm going to try to get rid of those four meals before I leave. But if I have 20 bucks left over, the bucks will roll over into the spring semester. But they will not roll over into the next school year. It is just into the next semester going from fall to spring. Yeah, sometimes you see a lot of students who have a lot of pirate bucks left over go to what we call our pod markets. It's kind of like a um, convenience store on campus. You can go and buy groceries and toiletries and things like that. And a lot of students like to go into the pod market and finish off all their bucks and then take all their groceries home um, when they go home for the summer. It is a large shopping spree. That's when I per allowed myself to go in and buy ice cream and and chips for the next semester. And it, that was kind of fun. It's a good time. Heather would like to know what kind of clubs are offered. How do I learn about them all? So ECU has over 500 clubs and organizations. And they can be found on the Engage website, which is engage.ecu.edu. If somebody can drop that in the chat. 
And that's a good way for you to kind of just see what clubs and organizations ECU offers. That way you can go in and say you're interested in becoming an education major. We do have an education, um, an elementary education club. So you could enter that. Or if you are a rec therapy major like Haley, you could go and join the rec therapy society. So let's see. And somebody dropped the engage.ecu.edu in the comments. Perfect. So, are doing so Haley, what? Oh, what were you yes, they are. They're so good. Haley, what are you involved in around campus? So, like Ashley said, I'm involved in the Rec Therapy Student Society. I'm actually the senator, so that's fun. Um, I'm also a member of the ECU Ambassadors, which is a large community service organization on campus. And then I um, have different jobs on campus. Like I said, I work for um, Campus Rec and Wellness. And then I also work as a photographer for the East Carolinian. And then I'm also a pirate navigator, um, which is actually a scholarship opportunity where you get to um, give tours um, to prospective students. And that's under the Office of Student Admissions. What about you, Ashley? I am also an ECU ambassador. I am involved in Greek life. I have two on-campus jobs, one work, both working for Campus Living. One's at the Campus Living front desk and one's being a peer academic leader. And then during the summer, I am an orientation assistant, which is the best job ever. Yeah, I forgot about my current job. So <laughs> sorry, Miss Karen and Miss Corey, but I'm also an orientation assistant. Oh, Kim Taylor says you give the best tours, Haley. Thank you, Miss Kim. <laughs> uh, I do enjoy giving tours. I really miss it. And I know y'all do too for the ones who um, weren't able to see campus um, before um, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So I'm sure you all are excited to um, tour campus and see campus in the fall. And we actually will have some virtual tours um, coming up this summer. So definitely keep an eye out for those as well. All right. And then we had another question. What is Barefoot on the Mall? So Barefoot on the Mall occurs on reading day at the end of the spring semester. And we have typically a concert we have t-shirts we have um, a whole bunch of games and clubs and organizations out on the mall um, it's kind of a way for students to kind of blow off a little bit of steam before finals start and kind of you know get out that little bit of anxiety before finals start and we all um i didn't hear if you mentioned it we have a um a special singer come every year um, one year we had T-Pain, that was last year, 2019 year, and then the year for, before that um, we had Jesse McCartney, um, so it's definitely always a good time to barefoot on the mall. Zaria asked, can I bring my pet fish to the residence hall? Yes, Zaria, it just has to be in a 10-gallon or smaller tank, um, and fish are one of the few pets that we do allow. And I believe it's on Campus Living's website that gives you the full do's and don'ts of what you can bring in the residence hall, including pets. All right. Um, Heather asked, how do you recommend my student get involved at school? Um, I think it all depends on what your student is up for. Um, me personally, I like to be very involved. I like being busy all the time. So for me, I tried to get as involved as I could. Um, I did start off with one thing at a time, though, and kind of build up. So I started off with ECU Ambassadors. And once I was able to figure out that I could handle that, and I liked that, and I had time, and I started another thing, and then another thing, and eventually I led up to where I am now. And Ben asked, if I don't like my roommate or they are too loud and annoying, can I make them switch rooms? That's a good question, Ben. Um, so the first week 
um, that you and your roommate are living um, in your residence hall. You will have a um, sit down meeting with your RA and you will establish a roommate contract. Um, so I definitely suggest um, bringing up any things that you may not want your roommate doing, like maybe say like, hey, can we agree on not having the lights on past 11 or something like that? Um, and then if after that your roommate um, becomes too loud or things like that, that's when I would highly suggest, again, going to your resident advisor. Um, and then if things don't work out, you are allowed to switch. Um, but first and foremost, I recommend talking to your roommate. Maybe y'all can um, fix whatever issues you may have. And then after that, go talk to your resident advisor. And then she can see um, about you switching rooms. And then Heather asked, what are living learning communities? So living learning communities are where students are able to live in the same residence hall and on the same um, hall in their residence hall where they have a common interest. Um, for example, um, like the biology LLC, if you are a biology major and they applied for that living learning community, they are able to live all in that hall together. Um, and things like where Haley and I were in the Camp Pirates living learning community, we all went to Camp Pirates. Um, which was a week before school. So then we were able to all live together and then we ended up being able to learn together. So it also provides you a buddy in your residence hall that is taking similar classes. So you are able to kind of have a built-in study buddy. And Liz has dropped the LLC link in the chat for us. Thank you, Liz. And I do know that the dates for applying to living learning communities, um, the deadlines are coming up. I believe it's early July. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I would definitely suggest if you are at all interested in living learning communities to um, check that out before the deadline hits. Yes. So you can make sure to look at the link Liz dropped in here. Beth asked, is Camp Pirates still an option um, for this year? Unfortunately, it is not. Um, we are also bummed because Ashley and I have both been first mates for Camp Pirates um, for these past few years. Um, we were still going to try to do it, but considering that we would all be staying in close quarters, that Camp Pirates um, is not an option this year. I know we are just as sad as you all are. Um, but I would definitely still be on the lookout for different events that the Office for Student Transitions is um, having for our students um, for our first few weeks of classes. Um, it'll definitely help them kind of get that same feel and experience that they would have had at Camp Pirates as well. Absolutely. So Haley, what's your favorite class you've taken at ECU so far? Without a doubt, my favorite class that I've taken is scuba diving. Um, you would never think that you could take um, a class such as scuba diving in college, but guess what? You can. Um, I kind of did it just as to try something new. Um, it wasn't um, a part of my major or anything like that. Um, you will see that your different majors offer you to take free electives. So that was one of mine, and through um, ECU scuba diving, I was able to become scuba certified in one semester um, for completely free. Well, not free, built into my tuition, but it's definitely my favorite class that I've taken. What about you, Ash? Um, I would say one of the classes I have taken my, this past fall semester because I'm really able to get into my education classes and I'm able to be in the classroom with the students and learning based on firsthand knowledge. So now that I'm in my program, I think all of my classes are becoming my favorite because it's training me to become a bet to become the best teacher I can be. So I think it's cool. Um, Carrington asked, "Is there any way I can get a free tutor?" 
Absolutely, Carrington. Um, you can always check out our Pirate Academic Success Center. Um, that's free tutoring for students. And like I mentioned, you can always do our um, virtual tutoring sessions that they'll be offering in the fall as well. Um, and then also, if you would like to be hired by our Pirate Academic Success, Success Center, you can do that too. Um, if you make a high enough grade in the class, you can apply and become a tutor for that class. Um, so yeah, definitely check out that free resource on campus. Great resource. And I know they're doing a great job of helping to put tutoring sessions and um, small study groups together online since the students right now for summer school are online. So they are prepared for any, any and everything when it comes to the tutoring services that your student may need. So Heather asked us, what can my kid do if she gets sick? Well, Heather, she can go to the Student Health Center. She will need to make an appointment, um, and or she could just walk in, but I highly suggest an appointment. And they're both available on the Health Science Campus and on Main Campus. Um, and there is a full pharmacy in there, so your student can get their prescription sent there. And there are real doctors and nurses there. Um, it's not doctoral students and nursing students. They are real doctors, and they are there to um, make sure that your student is able to feel better. Um, while we're on the topic of student health, it is also very important that your student submits their immunization records as soon as possible. Um, and that is something you can look on the student health website for to um, find the best way to do that. There is also, you can also call student health and ask questions. Um, but the sooner that your student is able to put that, give their immunization records to student health, the better. Um, and also your student needs to be ma make sure to check their student email to make sure that student health is not emailing them asking about their immunization records. Great questions by everybody. These are very good. Ashley, what was your um, favorite memory from freshman I want to say Barefoot on the Mall was super fun. I got to see Jesse McCartney, who I idolized as a young gal. And so I thought it was just super cool to be able to see him in concert for free. You know, it's just an ECU event. And I was like, sure, let's go. And it was super fun. We got to put our hammocks in the trees. I mean, I stood on a bench and watched Jesse McCartney perform. Um, I had a friend who was not able to go. So I FaceTimed her in on the one Jesse McCartney song she wanted to hear. So I just thought it was just, that's just a really cool event. And I was able to like just see ECU kind of form this community and be a part of that community. What was your favorite memory from freshman year? One of my favorite memories, well, I loved all of Pirate football because my family always comes and tailgates with me, so I enjoy being able to see them on the weekends. Um, but one um, game specifically was the, um, dang it, that, never mind, that was sophomore year. I was going to say the game that we beat UNC. <laughs> that was a really good game. It was 41 to 19. Um, so since that wasn't freshman year and my mind is beating me, I would just say all of Pirate football and all the times that I got to tailgate with my family. Very cool. Those are definitely special times. If you could tell your freshman self, now as senior at ECU Haley, what would you tell your freshman self? You're asking the deep questions here, Ashley. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> I would say, I would just tell myself that everything's going to work out. Um, freshman year is definitely a, um, a awesome transition, but also can be a scary one. Um, so I would definitely tell myself who was all worried about leaving home and going to live by myself that everything is definitely going to be okay. What about you? I can agree with that. I think I would tell myself that um, 
not everything's going to go according to plan and it's going to be okay. Um, I'm one of those that likes to plan out her life and know exactly what she's doing for the next four years of her life. And I had to change it around a little bit. So it's going to be okay that I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Liz said, so turtles are allowed. <laughs> I do not think turtles are allowed. I could be completely wrong. Um, but like We I need to reference that. that. But like Ashley said, I would definitely check out um, Campus Living's um, website to see things that you can and cannot bring. I know that fish are allowed, and I know that like hamsters are not. So I feel like turtles are more similar to being like a hamster as far as the space in your room and things like that. Um. But yeah, I would definitely check out Campus Living's website for that. Yeah, and Zarya just put in the comments the link for that. It's called What to Bring and What to Leave at Home. And I would suggest you leave a pet turtle at home. But bring your fish. Does anybody well, have any other questions for us? Jamie asked a great question. Since we are talking about water, is there a pool on campus? Yes, Jamie. There is one indoors and outdoors, both at the Student Rec Center. Um, the one indoors is home um, is larger, and um, it's home to a lot of fun sporting events. Like, I remember watching somebody play Battleship in canoes in the pool, which I think is a great canvas rec and wellness game that they have played. Um, it's somewhere you can go and swim laps. Um, and then the best thing about the outdoor pool is right around January, February, when it is nice and chilly, we will do the polar plunge. And that is where you put on your swimsuit and you and all of your great friends go outside and jump in the outside pool while it is freezing and chilly. Um, but I know I have done it the past three years and I plan to do it this fourth year. Um, so the answer, short answer is yes. We do have a pool. Long answer is yes. And it has a bunch of great activities to go with it. All right, and All right, do we have any final questions? Oh, Miss Tanya asked a good question. What size TV do you recommend for the dorms? Um, for your residence hall, I would suggest, um, I believe mine was a 32 inch. It wasn't large, but it wasn't tiny um but that was my preference a lot of it depends on the preference that your student would like if they would like something smaller they can put something smaller if they want something larger i i guess you could put something larger in there i just wouldn't want it to take over your entire room so mine was a 32 inch yeah i'm like ashley i would remember that you have to have the space for it and you might want to use um like the um desk and stuff in your room just for other storage purposes um, so I wouldn't get anything too large, um, but definitely get um, a TV that is most comfortable for your student. And then Heather asked, when do parking passes go on sale? Um, what we have heard is it is going to be the middle of July, but that is not a solid date. That is just what is rumoring around, but I am sure that as soon as... Um, parking 
has that date ironed out in 100%, they will let us know. Heather said, can students use the Minji's pool now that the team is gone? I do not believe so. Um, our pools in the um, Campus Recreation Center are the ones that are for students. I believe that the one that is now up at swimming and diving um, would now typically be used for scuba because I know that we use those pools um, when I took my class. So I think now that they'll just be used um, for academic purposes. Heather said, well, then... well, Heather Hawks said, will they send us mm -hmm. an email talking about parking? Yes. Um, they will be sending you an email um, in advance. They won't just send it on the day of. Um, they'll tell you what date parking is going to go on sale. Um, and then Miss Tanya asked, can the TVs be mounted on the wall? I am unsure. I do not think so. I know that most of our residence halls, the walls are brick. Um, I don't know if you would feel comfortable doing something with maybe command hooks, because that's typically what our students use to hang stuff. Um, but I think it's one of those things that if your student can figure it out while still um, keeping in mind the different um, things that housing um, has asked you not to do, like putting a big old hole in your wall, um, then I would maybe say go for it if you can do it safely. I would suggest using command strips because I am really sure that um, they do not like nails or screws going into their walls because, as Haley said, it will create a large hole. Mm -hmm. So I would stick to the command strips if you're trying to hang something up, but I would feel better if, they, if you would place it on your desk or on a stable surface. I Just personally so had mine on my desk, happen. and I had a smaller one, so it really wasn't that bad. And my roommate and I shared a TV, so it's not like we had two different TVs coming in. Um, we just shared, so then it wasn't taking up as much space. I think that helps, too. Does anybody okay. have some last few questions before we wrap up? give people time to answer or to ask. So I am not seeing any more questions. So I'm going to wrap us up. So thank you so much for joining us today. As a reminder, this session will be available on Facebook. Um, we hope you'll join us for our next session tomorrow at 11 a.m. It's going to be via WebEx and it's going to be talking about one cards. Very exciting topic. Um, feel free to visit our website at orientation.ecu.edu if you would like more information. Thank you and have a great rest of your night.